It's so hot. I can't bear it. I don't want to live in this heat. Well, guess what? Your engine feels the same. Hashtag feel your engine. This is auto rage explained. And yes, it is Tuesday, which means the day when I tell you about automobile technology is super simplified. Now, if you want to watch this video in Hindi, click on the link in the description bar below because Auto Rage India Hindi is a Hindi channel and Auto Rage India, which you are watching right now, it's an English channel. Have you noticed this in cars? These are signature grills used by car manufacturers and they are not just for show, they have a purpose and that purpose is to let air into radiator. But why does engine need cooling? To maintain optimum temperature for your engine. When combustion takes place in an engine, air and fuel mixture burns and some amount of heat is discharged with exhaust gases. That is why a silencer gets hot and remaining heat is absorbed by that metal block which is most probably made up of cast iron or aluminium. During combustion, the combustion flames can be up to 1500 to 2500 degrees Celsius and the components can reach temperature up to 300 to 500 degrees Celsius. And if the components in your engine will absorb more heat than they can handle, then they will expand. And when they expand, they cease and die. Because metal expands when it heats. And what saves your engine from dying? Engine cooling system. Today you'll know about engine cooling system and about some things which you'll never know why they existed the way they are. And by the end, I'll tell you a bonus information. But before that, if you are confused on your next new car purchase, are you? We have a solution for you by the end of the video. Cars have liquid cooling and motorcycles have air cooling. Why? Because motorcycle's engine is surrounded by air and thus it has those fins which dissipate heat. And since your car's engine is not out of the hood, it is inside the hood, which means that there is less air to cool it. Plus, it is much bigger than your motorcycle's engine. If we look at the engine block, you can see that there are ducts. And these ducts allow the coolant to travel all around the engine so that it can absorb heat. But what the hell is engine coolant? It's a mixture of water and antifreeze. Antifreeze prevents the water from overheating. It's a strange word. Antifreeze mostly consists of ethylene glycol or for lower toxicity propylene glycol. When mixed with water, it lowers the freezing point so that water doesn't freeze in winters and it also increases the boiling point of water. So it prevents the water in coolant to boil at 100 degrees Celsius. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Engine coolant also consists of corrosion prohibitors which don't allow rusting wherever the coolant travels. And antifreeze is mixed in water in proportion of 40% to 70% but usually it is about 50%. So antifreeze with water makes coolant which is usually of green color. It can be of yellow color, pink or orange so that whenever it leaks you know what is leaking. So it lowers the freezing point, it increases the boiling point so that more heat can be absorbed and if you drink it, you're going to puke. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so don't drink it. Before we move further, answer me this. This is a hot iron. What will happen if you pour some water on it? You have 10 seconds to answer that question in comment box. 10 seconds up, your time is up. Water evaporates, which means that it absorbs the heat from the metal surface and it also means that it cools the metal surface. So liquid is a good absorber of heat and it can cool metal fast. Now let us see what is exactly happening in your car's cooling system. Your car has radiator in front which has passage for the coolant to pass from upper radiator tank to lower radiator tank. And fins allow the exchange of heat when the air passes by. So coolant travels from top to bottom because uh, gravity and meanwhile it gets cooled. Engine on the other hand has belt which is driven because of rotation of crankshaft pulley and it also rotates the water pump which sucks in the coolant and sends it to engine block where exchange of heat takes place and cool coolant gets warmer and warmer and eventually gets hot. There is this guy known as thermostat who is like your boss who doesn't allow you to go out for that sweet sweet fresh air. This one is for you. Hashtag my boss thermostat. Remember that cool coolant gets warmer and warmer and then hot? Well, what if it doesn't get hot, it's just warm. It means that it can absorb more heat. This thermostat doesn't allow the coolant to go back to the radiator and send it back to water pump. So it can again get recirculated. And when the temperature is sufficiently hot, it allows coolant to pass and go back to radiator and again get cooled. This cycle happens again and again and again. What year is this? 2025? I still have the same phone. I still, I still don't have money in my pocket. <laughs> you must have observed that the cap of radiator is made up of metal. Well, it's not for show. Uh, how does it look on me? 
It's because the coolant exerts a lot of pressure when it is hot, just like a pressure cooker. And when pressure exceeds a certain limit, the cap has spring mechanism which allows the coolant to go to overflow tank via pipe. Which also means that the radiator cap is allowing the pressure to grow in the radiator. And if pressure grows, the boiling point increases. A bit of science talk. Boiling point of water is directly proportional to its pressure. More the pressure, higher the boiling point. Oh, don't worry, don't worry. We are not getting into details of that. And that is why oil overflow tank is never completely filled. So that coolant can fill up when pressure increases in radiator. And when pressure reduces, the radiator sucks back the coolant. Any fluid travels from higher pressure to lower pressure. Wait a minute. If radiator is cooling the coolant, then what is cooling the radiator? Radiator fan. In earlier days, radiator fans used to directly run from engine. So radiator fan was totally dependent on the engine speed. So in 1960s, I went to those engineers and I asked, why don't you use uh, electric fans? They got an idea. And now radiator fans run on electric motor which can automatically start and stop as per cooling requirement. Why don't you turn on that AC? It's so hot. Please. You are a thermostat. My boss thermostat. Now it is time for bonus information. When it is super cold outside and you want to get warm and cozy inside your car, you turn on that heater. Heater core is a sweet little tiny radiator which is located in dashboard of your car which draws in hot coolant from the engine and sends it back. Hot coolant. And when you turn on the heater, a fan blows air. Air passes by that radiator which gives you warm air. Do you want to buy a radiator or water pump or radiator fan? Well then go to boardmo.com. It's an online platform where you can go and buy genuine spare parts and get them delivered at your home. You can also download their application. They provide genuine spare parts on your doorstep. Think about spare parts, think about boardmo. And if you are confused on your next new car purchase, don't worry, WhatsApp us on this number, we'll understand your needs and based on your need, we'll suggest you right car because everyone has different needs. Companies like Godmo help us make videos like this for you. Because of them, the AC is running in our office and he's not a thermostat. So support Godmo and support us if we have earned it. If you like our efforts, do not hesitate to support our videos. Thank you so much for watching this video. Do like, comment, share and subscribe. If you really like our efforts, do not hesitate to do that. See you next time.